learners welcome to NIOS studio i dr ritika sharma assistant professor amity institute of education amity university uttar pradesh today in this session i will discuss with you meaning of society and its institutions let us start with a very comprehensive definition of robert morrison that society is a web of relationships and individual in this web of relationship is the basic component of a society when these individuals interact with each other it gives birth to a group and interaction between these groups develop a kind of relationship between them which ultimately leads to society there are some key concepts which are very essential to understand if we want to understand the meaning of society these key concepts are social relations social role and status norms and values let us discuss these key concepts one by one first one is social relations some of the sociologists are of the view that society exist only when the members know each other and possess common interest for example if two persons are traveling in a train their relationship of coexistence in the same compartment of being at the same time at same place does not constitute society but as soon as they know each other they develop a relationship among them the element of society is created the meaning of social relationship shall be more clearer if we draw a distinction between physical and social relations the relationship between pen and ink the relationship between earth and a sun a book and bookshelf fire and wood is physical relationship because these physical objects do not have any reciprocal awareness whatsoever now this reciprocal awareness means that two people two individuals know about each others they know each others likes dislikes and ultimately they have common interest on the other hand the social relations exist between the mother and the child the teacher and the student are determined by reciprocal awareness my dear learners it is very essential to understand that without this reciprocal awareness there can be no social relationship and therefore no society in our daily life we come across different types of social relationships for example in our everyday life we come to across the relationships like mother father son daughter husband wife all these relationships are called primary relations and other relations like uncle aunt nephew niece these relationships are categorized as secondary relations my dear learners besides these primary and secondary relations we have other different relations in our life like we have social relations with our friends with our neighbors those relations are called tertiary relations now you can easily understand that social roles are changing with the change in situation or change in the social context our roles are not fixed for example in this session i am playing a role of a teacher or facilitator but when i will go back to my home i would play a role of a mother to my children role of wife to my husband and role of daughter to my parents now we can easily understand that our social roles are ever changing as we face changes in our situations and social context so we can say that social role is a set of expectations it therefore implies that one role cannot be defined 
without referring to another. For example, the role of a teacher cannot be defined without defining the role of a student. Similarly, role of a mother cannot be defined without defining the role of a child. So all these roles are interdependent to each other. These roles are attached with certain positions in the society and are called social status, which is based on social evaluation. A person can have a high social status if the role playing by that person is given importance by the group. Now, whatever role we are playing in our society and whatever kind of social status we are having, it is regulated by certain norms and values which are further attached with reward and punishment. In our society, we have set rules, norms and values which are called unwritten constitution of a society which helps us to regulate our actions. Now application of reward or punishment in our society depends on the kind of role we are playing and what kind of social status is attached with our role. Now for the better functioning of a society, there are social institutions which are considered as backbone of a society. Without social institution, a society cannot achieve fulfillment in terms of economy, academy or relationships. When there are no rules and regulations in a society, people are more likely to indulge in crime and other harmful activities. Social institutions help in taming such activities. They contribute in organizing a society and its people. There are different types of social institutions which come with a set of rules and norms and being the member of society, we all have to follow them. There are five basic institutions of society. These are family, education, religion, polity and economy. Let us discuss these five basic institutions one by one. Family. As you all know, we all start learning from our family at the very initial level. It is the fundamental social institution which act as joining institution between individual and society. It has almost universal existence across the world. In most of the societies, the family is the major unit in which socialization happens. Parents, siblings and if the family is extended rather than nuclear, other relatives of our family all help in socializing children from the time they are born. This socialization process is imparting knowledge to the family members to adopt family and societal cultural norms and values, ethics and morals, recreations, education, etc. So we can easily say that our family is the first institution of learning. It has universal existence. It helps us in socializing and it acts as the joining institution between the society. A major source of practical and emotional support is also considered very important. It regulates legitimate reproduction because marriage institution is also the subsystem of our family. It is very important institution to transmit culture from one generation to another. Now come to the next social institution that is education. Education as social institution plays a vital role in our society. The function of education is multidimensional within the school system and outside it. Almost in every society, there exists educational system which may differ from one society to other. There are some universal functions of education as social institution. It helps in socialization of person 
and transmission of cultural heritage from one generation to other. It is very important as unless individual behaves in accordance with the norms of group, it is going to disintegrate. Some other functions are social mobility. Education and social mobility are closely related. Social mobility means that everybody get a chance to upgrade his social status. So education makes an individual capable to promote the growth and remove the backwardness of a country. The more useful and productive is the education, the more is the social mobility. Education always try to develop ability and capacity in individuals to gain higher status, positions or prestige and promotes effective social mobility. Now, let us discuss next very important social institution that is religion. Religion is the most powerful instrument of social control and social integration. How religion work for social control as every religion has certain code of conduct, ideals and values. We all being a follower of a religion try to imbibe such qualities among us which ultimately work for the benefit of the society. It generates a sense of belongingness in the society. It contributes to the integration of the personality. Through our religion, we are very fortunate to have scriptures like Ramayan, Bhagavad Gita, Quran, Bible, which are great literary works and storehouse of knowledge. Now, we will discuss the next social institution is polity. Political institutions are defined as a system of control through its organizations and legal or legitimate use of force. It helps to regulate relationships as customs and traditions are limited to a certain extent and cannot interpret the formal situations and events. For the interpretations of some of the formal situation and events, we need a regulatory body which work for the regulation of relationships and that regulating body is our political institutions. Political institutions in democratic setup like legislature, executive, judiciary. These three political institutions work very effectively in any democratic setup. Let us discuss one by one legislature. Protective legal environment is provided by legislature. It frames rules and laws so that profit is earned in a justified and a fair way by the members of the society. Second is executive. Government is the executory body of the laws which are framed by the legislature. The role of the government is to shape, direct and control the business activities which are running in a country. Then the next is judiciary. The role of judiciary is to see that the exercise of authority by the executives is according to the general rules laid down by the legislature. There are so many functions of political institutions. These institutions help to regulate relationships. They also help to make laws and policies. Political institutions make control over the resources in the society like to what extent we can utilize our resources. Political institutions also helps us to run the administrative machinery. It also provides different kind of facilities to the members of the society like recreational activities. Political institutions are also responsible for the protection of the members of a society. Like if we feel some kind of danger in our internal or external setup, 
it is the duty of political organization to give protection to the members of the society. Overall, we can say that political institution helps us to control our behavior, our action, so that ultimately we can give contribution to the society welfare and social cohesion. Now we will discuss very important social institution that is economy. The first important task of a society is to maintain itself. And for the maintenance, we need food, clothing and shelter for our members of society. It is not sufficient that there must be a system of production in a society. But it is equally important that we should have distributive system in our society. In a simple society, problem of distribution is simple because society is self-supporting. Members of that society are easily getting the services and goods for their survival. But when there is a complex society, goods passes through many hands before reaching to the consumers. Therefore, Economy as a social institution regulates production and distribution of goods and services and monitors their consumptions also. Economic institutions regulate certain economic activities. These activities are related with different sectors of the society. For example, primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector. Primary sector activities are those activities which help in the production of raw materials. For example, agriculture, fishing, mining and hunting. There are certain activities which are the part of secondary sector. When we add value to the products which are prepared in the primary sector, it will become the part of secondary sector. For example, furniture from wood clothes from cotton, food products from wheat and rice. These are the activities which are related with the secondary sector. Now, there is a tertiary sector and activities like care, education, treatment, transportation, all are related with the tertiary sector. So, the educational institution as well as the economic institutions deal with the regulation of these economic institutions. Other functions of economic institutions are training for economic activities. Like we have discussed that there are different activities in primary, secondary and tertiary sectors. So it means we need some trained, skillful person to perform these activities in the society. So educational institution also helps us to provide training to the individual so that all these activities related to primary, secondary and tertiary sectors can be completed effectively. One of the most important task of the economic institution is monitoring of economic activities. Whatever data economic institutions collected from the society, it will help them to frame new policies, modified rules for the betterment of the society. Proper functioning of a society depends upon the effective working of its social institutions. All five basic institutions are interrelated. No social institution survive without the help of other. Individually, we are the basic components of society, so its structure and function also depends upon how we work in the society, what is our role and what is our social status. So learners, I'll close this session with this. We will meet again in the next session. Till then, thank you.